Okay, here's 20 tips in no particular order, mainly geared towards beginners and people getting started, but who knows, even experienced players could learn a thing or two. There are many stashes hidden in the starter area, but these two chests in particular are really worth checking out. You can loot them pretty much every 5 minutes and they're gonna have ammo for your Makarov, the starter pistol, and medkits, which is super useful at the beginning when you broke. By the way, you're never gonna get disappointed exploring and going off the beaten path in this game. There's like easter eggs a little bit everywhere and a lot of things to find. When you go to your character sheet, you're gonna see that you have common skill and class skills. You only can start using class skills at level 8. My advice is to save all your points until level 8 and only use them into class skills. They are much more powerful and much more useful than the common skills. Speaking of class skills, you're gonna notice that there's like two paths that you can take. One is more PvP oriented and one is more PvE oriented. My advice is to start with only unlocking the PvE nodes at least until level 25 or 30 because you're only gonna do PvP until then and it's like maybe 50 hours of gameplay. And when you reach a much higher level, when you're actually gonna start doing PvP, you could do a one-time refund and switch like all your skills to PvP. Speaking of PvP, you can disable it until level 15 in your PDA. I don't advise to do it, because overall the community is pretty nice and there's very very few people shooting on sight and stuff like this. It also comes with XP penalties and you're not gonna be able to loot people's stashes for example, and sometimes there's very interesting stuff in them, so that's up to you. But like, at least know that if someone is bothering you, you can disable PvP until level 15. On top of cooking and crafting, campfires will very slowly heal you and most importantly can be used as a one-time respawn point. So it can be very useful to set up a campfire before doing something dangerous. Also, coal is much more efficient to keep your fire burning than using wood. There are some exceptions, but overall HP runs are much more effective against monsters, so if you can find them for your weapon, use them. Check different vendors, because they don't all carry the same inventory. And if you cannot find HP runs for your weapon, use full metal jacket ones. And if you're wondering, the full metal jacket extra, it's just more precise bullets, but they do the same damage. It's also a good thing to learn the enemy's weak points. You're gonna do more damage and more crits if you hit these areas. For example, boars take more damage in the body than the head, so when they're charging you, it's better to shoot slightly above the head so you're hitting the body and do more damage this way. Make sure to repair your weapons and armor regularly, because you're gonna do less damage and you're gonna have less protection if they are damaged. You can either have them repaired by any gunsmiths, or you can use repair kits. Repair kits are gonna be more expensive at the beginning, but the more experience you get with them, they're gonna become more efficient and the better option. And don't forget to change your armor plates too. Personally, I change them when they reach 60%. You should learn all the locations of the teleport anomalies that are safe, because they're gonna save you a ton of time traveling. Be careful with the unsafe one though, because they're gonna kill you most of the time. I'm gonna leave your map in the comment if you need to. Try also to always have cider with you, it's cheap and it's the best way to refill instantly all your stamina so you can keep running and running, especially when carrying stuff. Oh, and crouching makes you replenish your stamina faster, just in case. If you're too cheap and don't want to buy cider all the time, deer meat and tea can do more or less the same thing to a lower extent and you can craft them for free. If you want to do this, the absolute best place, at least in my opinion, to gather all the herbs you need, and the wood too, and mushrooms, is the field next to depot. And there are many places where you can find deers, but at least for me, the best place is right here. Use map markers. They're super useful, for example, to mark the safe teleport we just talked about but they can be used for pretty much anything. Every time you stumble upon something interesting, mark it. And you might think it's a little bit over the top, but for example, that's what my map looks like for the exclusion zone, with all the artifact spawns and all the dangerous areas marked. It's super, super useful. Technically, you can use any type of weapons if you have the attributes necessary, 
but each class has a speciality. For example, as an engineer here, it's the submachine guns. If I use a different type of weapon, I'm not gonna have all the bonuses from my skill tree and I'm not gonna be able to go past 50% proficiency, so I'm never gonna have the full damage output that the right class gonna have. You can hold your brace to aim better and walk through toxic anomalies. It's very useful if you don't have a gas mask or a bandana to protect yourself. And you can throw nuts to disable anomalies, the 10 one being the most popular one, but it works too with tornadoes. Just be careful not to be too close because it can still push you away and do some damage. The mail system is of course super useful to send yourself all kind of stuff between the different bases, but you can also use it as some kind of universal storage that you can access everywhere when you can leave some things that are useful. For example, I'm always gonna use lockpicks in my mailboxes, so I don't have to cross the whole map to go pick them up if I need them somewhere. When small symbionts jump on your back and start hitting you and stealing your stuff, the best way is to get your knife, look up, and knife in the air. It's gonna kill it. Use the friend and enemy system to your advantage. For example, you can add all the toxic players or everyone who shoots you on sight for no reason. Their name is gonna appear in red when you see them, but most importantly, there's gonna be a little green light that tells you if they're connected in the same area as you, so you can be careful if you need to. Mining and smelting is a very important part to be able to craft and do missions. Around the edges of the spider cave and on the path that leads directly to it is a very very good spot to find all the rare ores like chrome and nickel without having them to go very deep in the mine to find them. And keep in mind that for some ores, mining is not necessarily the easiest and fastest way to get them. For example, coal and ferrous metal, you can find them everywhere on the edges of caves, which is much much faster than mining. Lead can be gathered slowly on every enemy you killed, but the best way is still to recycle all batteries. For non-ferrous and precious metal, the best way is to kill sand spiders, they drop a ton of them and you get all the XP on top. Try to do every event you stumble upon, they generally have very good rewards. For example, the one at Solar City at the beginning. You just need to craft a coal filter, which is super easy, and it gives you very expensive stimulators. If you go somewhere and start losing your health, apparently for no reason, it's probably a radioactive area. If you don't have a Jaija counter, you're not gonna notice it. The best way to protect you against radioactivity is a gas mask. Don't forget to activate it. A bandana works too for some mild radioactive areas. If you forget to activate your gas mask or bandana and get into radioactive area, you're gonna get some radiation poisoning. So even after activating them, you're still gonna lose your health. The only way here is to use anti-rad. Cooked meat is actually much lighter than raw meat. I like having a fire running when I'm on a big farming session. In the long run, it saves a lot of time because you're hunting and cooking at the same time and you're gonna be able to carry much more in the end. For anybody getting started anyways, I cannot recommend enough the Borg Binom's Guide on Steam, it's what helped me through the whole beginning of the game. The amount of work this guy put into his guide is actually amazing. I was planning on giving some tips on how to make money in the game, but there's actually a lot of things to talk about, so I'm gonna do a dedicated video on this pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.